You stand with Israel because you know that the story of Israel is not only the story of the Jewish people, but of the human spirit that refuses again and again to succumb to history's horrors. All right, time to break out the pointed sticks and get into the political arena now. First up, Democratic media strategist and former campaigner for Barack Obama, Franco Ripple. From the right side, president of Endeavor Strategic Communications and Republican strategist, Kurt Bardella. Gentlemen, thanks so much for being here. Thanks for having us, Ed. All right, Kurt, I'm going to start out with you. Benjamin Netanyahu coming to Congress, and everybody says it was a mistake. It was wrong. He basically shot himself in the foot. And, oh, yeah, by the way, it still was a bad idea for the Republicans, and they shouldn't have issued the letter. Come on, Kurt, get out there right now. Aren't you going to admit that this was just the wrong tack to take? Well, I'm not going to speak for the, for the prime minister. <laughs> we'll find out uh, when we get the election results whether it was the right player. Now, I think for Republicans, however, in Congress, this was about asserting themselves against a president who's been running amok through executive order, executive fiat, basically coming before Congress with the State of the Union saying that he's going to bypass Congress, ignoring the fact that we had an election last November and Republicans were given an overwhelming majority in the House and a clear majority in the Senate. And I think you're seeing that it's working, though. That Aren't there more important things, though? I guess I'm going to hit you with this, Kurt. Aren't there more important things to do other than this? Because let's face it, the Iranian nuclear negotiations very, very, very difficult. And also it's very important for world peace, if you will. But aren't there other things that the Republicans should be honing in on right now to go after the president? Well, I think, though, that nothing is more important than establishing themselves as a true check and balance with an executive branch that has gone completely rogue and, and, and has completely bypassed the Constitution. I think that what the Republicans in Congress have done was much bigger than just this particular issue with the Prime Minister and Netanyahu. It was about making sure the White House knew where they stood. And also, when you look at even what's going on today with the, with the human trafficking bill and the vote on the Attorney General, Every day that goes by, the support for the Attorney General nominee is, is peeling off. It's not good for the Democrats either, and it's not good for the administration either. But in the long-term game that's being played, Republicans had to come out forcefully and establish themselves as a legitimate check and balance, and that's what this was really about. All right, Franco, let's get it to you. Uh, let's put it this way, then. You, you Democrats, you're gutless. You should go against your president for crying out loud. It was a wrong thing to do. He should stand up to Iran, and the, the Democrats... You guys should absolutely thank the Republicans for what they did. Boy, I like this. I'm going to fire you up yet. Go for it. <laughs> All right, Ed. Well, unfortunately, the reality is that the Republicans made a huge mistake, both tactically and on the international stage, by inviting the prime minister without uh, the president's involvement to address Congress. But all he's uh, trying to do is save the Middle East. He's trying to stop the United States from getting involved in a really bad deal that's going to arm the Iranians. No one's saying that it's a bad deal, though. The reality is, when you look at it from the international stage, this is a deal that uh, will not allow the Iranians to uh, acquire uh, weapons of mass destruction or, or nuclear weapons. This is a deal that's been 10 years in the making, and it's a deal not only between the United States and Iran, but also uh, Russia and Germany and a host of other international players. So this is an important deal. But and it's a bad deal. But, Ed, what, what the Republicans did by inviting the prime minister of another nation to address uh, this Congress against the president's wishes not only was wrong, for some of those senators, it may have been illegal. And I'm talking about Senator Tom Cotton, who just this week, it was pointed out by a retired Army major general, may have violated uh, his chain of command. Uh, and my, may have violated the Uniform Code of Military Justice. Because okay, hang said, on just a second here, because I see Kurt shaking his head already at that one. Go, Kurt. I just find the irony when we talk about legality and process, and I just can't help think to myself, where is this love of legality and process when we see Hillary Clinton uh, you know, destroying her emails in an unprecedented fashion to avoid transparency, to obstruct... There it is. Uh, Kurt Bardella drops the Hillary Clinton hammer. There you go. I knew it was, it was only a matter of time before that came in, Ed, and we'll get to that in a moment. But what I want to remind everyone of is the fact that Tom Cotton said it was a violation of Article 2, Section 2 of the Constitution, uh, and and I have a copy, uh, thanks to the Cato Institute, of my Constitution right here. And nowhere in it does it say that, uh, that what he, he did was the right thing to do or was legal. All right, let's go ahead and get on to Hillary Clinton then, seeing as Kurt went ahead and opened it up. Franco, I'm going to go ahead and start with you. Let's be really honest here. The former Secretary of State is being arrogant. They're basically saying, I did what I did, and I don't care what anybody thinks about it. But I guess we can say that from the Democrat side, still shows that over 50% of the people believe that she would still be the best president of the United States. What gives, Franco? Come on. 
she would be the best president of the United States based on everything from experience to her tenacity on the international stage to a long history of standing up for everyday uh, working class Americans. What did but she accomplish as Secretary of State? She accomplished a lot of things, but I want to address your point specifically about the emails. There's a long-standing precedent of many senior-level uh, executives in government service using private emails, both at the federal level and at the state level. And she has asked the State Department to turn over those emails. Absolutely, but I do want to point out that Dan Metcalf, who was with the Justice Department in 2007, he was the founding director of the Justice Department's Office of Information and Privacy, basically pointed out in Politico today that reality is not Mrs. Clinton's best friend that in essence she did break the absolute spirit of the law Franco. you know <laughs> <laughs> you know and, and the reality is uh, people have to use email to get things done. She chose to use a personal email address. She's asking for those records to be turned over. You and I delete personal emails all day long I'm sure when they're not relevant but we're not in the State Department though we don't work for the government. That's right. She does. And she's asked for the State Department to turn over those emails. And I think that they're doing that. They're in the works of doing that. It's just like when Bill Clinton, um, I'm sorry, when Jeb Bush was uh, Freudian governor of slip. Florida. <laughs> when, when Jeb Bush was governor of Florida, it took seven years after he left office for them to go through his emails. And now that he's running for president, okay. finally put them online. Hang it on, I got to bring Kurt back in here. 60 seconds. Go for it, Kurt. Now you get your turn. All right. Well, I think that the key issue here is first, it's unprecedented that the Secretary of State exclusively used a personal email address on a server that she had constructed to, to conceal what she was doing, who she was communicating with, what was she getting incoming. And I think the broader issue is first it was, well, keyword searches were used to determine what was personal and what was work. Then it was, well, actually someone line by line, email by email, looked at them and made a determination of what was to be deleted and what was to be preserved. And we don't know who that, what that person was, what that process entailed. And the only way to know that is to actually turn over the server to an objective, independent entity to review it themselves and find out really what happened. And if Secretary Clinton is serious and, and honest about what the process was and what she says what was withheld or not withheld, she should have no problem turning over that server to somebody. Seriousness and honesty, my goodness, gentlemen, we've run out of time. How dare we do that when we're actually getting to the real crux of American politics here in just a few short seconds. Uh, we'll definitely do this again. Franco Ripple, always a pleasure having you in the show. Kurt Bardella as well. Gentlemen, thanks so much. Uh, don't worry about it. I'll see if I can just kind of incite you both again next time. <laughs> thanks a lot, <laughs> thanks guys. So much, All right, it was the best day of our next guest's life. And all it took was the simple act of marching in a parade. It's coming up next, right here on Midpoint.